Hey, what's up guys? I'm here to present the final video in the How to Reskin an iOS app series. In this video, I'm going to show the upload process and show you what it takes to get it to the App Store. So, I'm assuming you watched video one and two by now. If you haven't, go and check those out so you know where I'm at. The final step of video two was to archive the project in Xcode and then upload it to iTunes Connect. I explain all of that at the very end of video two. So right now I'm starting from there. So once you've uploaded the app to iTunes, you're going to go to the iTunes Connect website. Actually, this step is right after you archive it, before you upload it, you need to do this step. So sorry if I confused some of you guys. I didn't mean to say after you upload it. Because you need to do this step in order to be able to upload. So what you do is, once you're in iTunes Connect, this is the main screen. You go to My Apps. Press this little plus here. You press New App. And then you're going to have to go to the developer portal to register a new bundle ID. Uh, let's check out what the, where's the app? So in my Commerce Pro, going to open that up to check what the bundle ID was. So if you remember from video one, inside the Xcode project. Um, all right, <clears throat> you press on this little blue icon and there's a bundle identifier. You're gonna copy that. Then you can just quit Xcode. You want to go to app IDs, which is under identifiers, press the plus Put the name of your app, mine is called Commerce Pro. Put in the bundle ID, which we just copied from earlier. Select any of these if you use them. Mine's a pretty simple app, so there are no um, like Siri Kit or Wallet or any of those. So if you're doing a basic app, you probably won't need to check any of that. Um, Oh, I used a different account for this. So just for this demo, I have two different like iTunes accounts, so I'll just do that. But you'll normally want to just copy it directly. I was just creating the other, the app in a different account on Xcode, so that's why it didn't work. And you press register, press done. After that, you can close that and then just refresh your page. You might have to a couple of times before it registers. You just press new app again. Look for your bundle identifier. Oh, it's there right away. So you select your bundle identifier from here. Then you put in the name of your app. It's called Commerce Pro. Choose iOS. Go to English or whatever language you want it to be in. For SKU, I typically just do the same as my bundle identifier. This doesn't really matter too much. And then if you have other users on your account, that's what this is for. Most of you probably won't have that, uh, but I always just keep it to all. So there we have created the app on iTunes Connect. So the first step you wanna do is choose your category. This is a shopping app, so I'll choose shopping you can choose a secondary if it applies, but there's not really anything that I want to select there. So I'll save that. You can also add an optional subtitle. Um, so shop for used stuff. This will show up on the newer versions of the App Store. The privacy policy is optional. If you have one, put it in there. And that's all you have to do in the app information. For pricing, I always make my iOS apps free. You can choose whatever price you want. They have a ton of prices to select. So typically it's just going to be like between free and 199. 
So choose that and select save. And that's all you have to do with this, unless you're trying to make it available only in certain countries or something, but typically you don't want to do that. So now I'm in the main part of the app. From here, you upload screenshots. So with the way I tell you to create screenshots in my previous video, it creates 5.5 inch display screenshots. So you're going to want to select the 5.5 inch button then find where your screenshots are. I'll let me find some screenshots. And then you can just drag them right in like that. It should load everything up. Uh, that should not be there. So then all your screenshots are here. Press save real quick. Make sure nothing gets erased. So now your screenshots are all set and uploaded and you can just change the order and stuff if you want to. From there, promotional text is just an optional piece of info in the App Store. I usually don't fill it out. Keywords are very important for getting organic downloads. So you just want a lot of words related to your app, but not words in the title because that's duplicating and that's going to be a waste of space. So if I'm doing a shopping app, I'm going to just say like shopping um, used clothes, names of other apps that are relevant, such as eBay, Amazon. So basically anything you think people will search to try to get to an app like yours. Um, keywords are pretty important if you're trying to get organic downloads. If you just want to sell the app, then they're really not that important. For support URL, I always put the URL of my website on my support page, but usually the app review is pretty nice about this and they don't really check it too much. So if you don't have a website, you can just put like a Facebook page or just kind of any URL. It usually doesn't matter. Occasionally they do reject it for the support URL. So if it gets to that point, then you might want to create a free like Wix thing or something with a support URL on it and some information. But um, typically you can just put anything there and they'll be okay with it. Marketing URL is optional, so I leave that blank. Description, I just usually put a short couple of sentences to hook the users in and then a few bullet points after that to tell the features and then a final sentence at the bottom just to close it out like download this app risk-free or something like that. The description doesn't really matter for me since I usually just resell the apps on Flippa, so I'm not looking to get any real downloads from the App Store. At this point, if you have archived your app, you are going to go back into Xcode and open up that archive window and then do all the upload stuff that I had set to do in video two. That will upload it to iTunes Connect and once it's uploaded, you'll see a little blue plus icon here. You press that and then you select your build. At that point, you're going to press save and your build should be there and everything should be good. Just know that when you upload a build, it can take like up to a couple of hours for it to show up in iTunes Connect. So don't be scared of that if it doesn't show up right away. Just be patient. Usually it's there within a few minutes, but uh, sometimes it takes a long time. And now with the new version of Xcode, when you upload a build, it'll put the App Store icon there automatically. So this should normally be filled out after that. If you want, you can manually choose one too. For copyright, just put your name or the name of your company, whatever you want to do. Um, version, if it's the first version, just put 1.0. If it's not, put whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Finally, the rating. So this will just tell the store who is able to download this app. Is it like a 12 plus, an 18 plus, uh, all ages? So most of my apps are just have none of this because they're just like e-commerce apps. But I do have some like dating apps, which you'll have to do a few of these like suggestive themes and like all that type of stuff. 
and it will make it an 18 plus app. Otherwise, they might reject the app because the rating is not correct and that'll waste time. So if you are doing like a dating app or something, make sure you choose the rating accordingly. After that, you want to put out some contact info. So I just put my name, my last name, whatever, email, phone number. At that point, if you need to sign in to use some certain functionality in your app, you want to provide a test account for the app review team. So you just create an account in your app and then just put the email here, testatest.com, testing, one, two, three. So that's just so they can log in and test all of the features using that account. Make sure you do that, otherwise they're going to reject the app and tell you they could not do a full review because of it. Uh, so don't waste time. Remember to fill that out. Um, at this point, you can choose to manually release the version. So once they approve it, that means you'll select the date when you want to um, uh, release the app. Otherwise, you can do automatic release, and right after they accept it, it'll get released. And then finally, you can just schedule it, and uh, that'll just choose a date beforehand that it'll release on. Uh, besides that, you're gonna press save. <coughs> so yeah, I didn't fill that stuff out. Anyways, I don't know if I'll be able to, yeah. So once you fill out everything, yeah, I'm missing all this stuff, you will press submit for review. And then there's just a couple of multiple choice questions like, are you using, um, uh, what is it? It just asks some questions that you basically just say no to. I forget exactly what they are, but um, just select no, unless you do use that stuff, but you'll know if you are, most people don't. So uh, at that point, everything will be set and you'll have submitted your app for review. At that point, um, it could take as little as one day for Apple to review your app all the way up to a month. I've had it take longer than a month before and uh, it really sucks when that happens, but that's pretty rare. Typically it's within a few days. And um, if you did everything correctly, you should have your app ready for sale and you can upload it to Flippa at that point. So I'll create another video on loading stuff into Flippa, creating a listing there. And I'll also upload another video kind of about app review and uh, some common errors that you'll have and some rejections and how to fix them, how to get around those things. Because once you start reskinning apps a lot, you'll uh, frequently have rejected apps and uh, it's just part of reskinning. Uh, but usually I don't get that many, maybe about 10% or less are rejections. Usually the app uh, guidelines are pretty relaxed. Um, a lot of people on the internet act like their guidelines are so strict and people are getting rejected, but I haven't really had that experience too much. So don't be too worried about that. Besides that, uh, that is it for this video series. I've taken you through reskinning the app, to creating the database, to submitting it for review. And at that point, you are all set with your brand new reskin. Uh, so if you like this video, like and subscribe, and I will be releasing more content in the next few days. Thanks for watching this video and be sure to download the free ebook on reskinning Amazon apps. This is great, especially if you don't have much money to start reskinning. So definitely check that out. Thanks, guys.